as I was walking up the bridge and having, I was having all these moments in my head just thinking about just, just these little crises I've been having in my head about well, what am I doing with like how how am I going to survive as an arts person in this town how did I manage to make it this far what's going to happen next and then the night was so beautiful I started to think oh no you know I don't worry about that Matana it's a beautiful night and you live in New York City and New York City is a wonderful city and I'm coming up you can look across to the water and it's coming up on it I was like wow and then I noticed there's a wall to my left where there's always a lot of really interesting tags and I went around the corner of it to read as I was coming back he came towards me and whether he pushed me against the gate or I fell back against the gate, I don't remember. That part is still a little blurry for me. And he grabbed for my bag and then my bike went in front. What are you doing? Like, are you serious? <laughs> like, I couldn't believe, like, are you serious right now? Somehow at that point, I did say I was reading this line on the wall and showed him. I really feel like he assumed that I was doing something illicit just by the fact that my skin was brown. I said to him, you know, you're harassing me right now. I just want you to know that you're harassing me. And he said something to the effect of, no, I'm not harassing you. And I was like, yes, you are. And that was that final moment that scared me most because that was the moment where I could tell that he was trying to decide what he was going to do with me. It's been a while since I'd been frightened, quite frightened like that. And uh, I even thank the officer for doing his job because I just really didn't want him to have any more reason to come at me. And it's like, Matana, you're thanking this guy for doing his job? And that again, to me, is like an old, passed down sort of negotiation of dealing with authority when you have no authority. You make the authoritative voice feel comforted, you know? I couldn't even believe that was coming when I heard it come out of my mouth. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, you're trying to be a runaway slave. <laughs> that's what you're doing. There was a certain sort of fire in his eye that I wonder if maybe that's just like a rookie fire. But to me, coming from where I come from, it was very racist fire. It was just really like, like just of all the of all the racists that I've dealt with throughout my entire lifetime, I recognize a particular look. I felt afraid for my physical safety as a citizen, but I also felt really afraid for my safety for a moment as a woman. But you know, in that particular moment also what was really important for me was feeling this gratefulness at being female even though I was scared because I could have been a law-abiding citizen black male with dreadlocks some piercings and some tattoos and I would have looked like you know that officer's worst nightmare the men are seen as overly violent, so they go after the men in a certain way. And then African-American women are over-sexualized in a very particular way that I feel like comes from... It feels like a serious plantation day, plantation, big house, like, legacy. Well, I just thought it was so ironic. It was like, here I am at this moment telling myself how fortunate I am to live in this city. And here comes this guy just, you know, stepped all over my dreams.